Hey, what's up everyone? Chip here with something I've been playing around with and I think you'll find is very exciting. So first some background, as many of you may know, I'm an industrial designer who does concept work as well. What I want to talk about is the modifier-based non-destructive workflow in Blender 2.8 and I'm adding a bit of a different spin on it. So what is Nitrox 3D? Nitrox 3D is the short name I will use to refer to a collection of non-destructive techniques and strategies for creating hard surface models in Blender. The acronym stands for Non-Destructive Iterative Techniques for Rapid Object Exploration in 3D. Nitrox 3D is not a set of Blender add-ons. In fact, it uses zero non-destructive add-ons and instead focuses on the breadth and depth of understanding the native Blender modifiers and their role in creating a non-destructive workflow. The concept of non-destructive hard surface modeling isn't new. In fact, there are several wonderful videos by folks like Cedric Lepillier and Jerry Perkins along with many others. I sure I'm not trying to co-op the whole non-destructive technique and tons of credit goes to those guys. Fact is, I was shown non-destructive by Jerry back in September of 2018 when I was working on an undercover robot concept which I can't share because of an NDA. Jerry showed me how to build it so I could iterate the many clients changes and it was a godsend. Mostly that was because in the past I'd used Moi 3D to create these models and it is a fully destructive workflow so changes were horrendously difficult. I pretty much fell in love with non-destructive and needed to learn more. One of the points I'd like to make is that Jerry Perkins, the creator of add-ons Hard Ops and Box Cutter, and Rudy Michau, creator of Fluent, and Cedric Lepillier, creator of Speedflow, already have deep, deep knowledge of much of this. And they've used that knowledge to build very powerful and fancy add-ons with custom pie menus, new terms, and vernacular on how to use it all. And of course, they know exactly how to use it and what order and what works all the time and what may not, and how to fix render artifacts, all because of their deep understanding. So I'm hoping the people who learn Nitrox 3D will gain that same deep knowledge, and that will make them eager to use all the tools out there as they will much better understand not just the how, but also the why. And that was the goal all along for myself, to understand the exact why. So to be clear, Nitrox 3D is not intended to supplant or replace the unique workflows which HardOps, BoxCoder, Fluent, Speedflow, and other optimized add-ons use for quickly creating hyper-detailed designs. It is more focused on real-world products created by industrial designers and concept artists, which is not to say those other products don't comport to create real-world products too. Perhaps this object can be described as the most simple and easy to understand exactly what Nitrox 3D is all about. So this is a basic electronics box of some sort. It's got these Wi-Fi antennas, it's got a port opening here, some LEDs. And if I switch over to a wireframe, you'll see it's fairly straightforward. It's got a bezel and a back area, radius corners, a little relief there. So let's take a look at what this might look like in the total non-destructive mode. And the way I'll do that is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select an object and I'll go to the modifiers panel. I'll use this plugin, which is called three D view modifier tools and I'll enable it. So now that that's set up, it'll put in the modifier pane all of these four buttons. And in this case, I'll hit the viewport viz button. And it'll basically take that whole box and turn it into one plane. So let's do this again for the LEDs. The same LED as the middle, but it's been mirrored. And I want to turn that off. And it's actually just one plane. I'll do the same with this other LED. Turn that off. Do the same with this box. And I'm going to turn that off. You can see below, these are the modifiers I'm using for these objects. We're going to get to that in a second video. And this is the relief, the cutout that we use. And here are the modifiers. I'll turn that off. Here's one of the uh, antenna ears. Because it's mirrored, we can turn that off. This is the connector. I'll select that and turn that off. That's all that. That little geometry right there makes that connector see it right there. When we're finished, what we have are basically nine faces. So nine faces creates that whole box. 
So this electronic box design was created by a company called Teenage Engineering. It's a pretty interesting company and has a unique design aesthetic. Might be worth checking out if you have a chance. As you can see, it's a simple product, but it's one that's really good to get started with when you're trying to understand non-destructive workflows. So I'd like to show you another example to demonstrate how powerful this workflow can be. Many of you know how insanely fabulous Vitaly Bulgarov is at creating unique and incredible hard surface models. One of my favorites and one I've tried and failed at multiple times in polygon modelers is this wonderful multi-hose clamp he created in the easy to use CADS NURB modeler MOA 3D. So I sat down with the goal of creating this using Nitrox 3D and here's where I ended after a couple of hours. Let's look at this model. You can see it looks fairly complicated, but in fact it's symmetrical about the X and the Y axis. So we only need to model a quarter of this and then we can mirror it around the X and the Y axis. So let's break this down now. But before we do that, I might mention that because of the way Nitrox 3D works with very simple primitives, we can change the resolution fairly quickly in this model. So we can make it a low poly model. Right now it looks like it's got uh, 54,000 faces in it. I'm going to toggle on the originating Nitrox 3D meshes that work with the modifiers. And let's toggle off this mesh so you can see what we have here is we have 30 faces and we also have one, two, three, four, five edges. So 30 faces and five edges creates that whole model. Time of that icon, you can kind of see what they're all doing there. And we're going to actually get into this in more detail in a later video. The important part to understand is that a very few modified polygons and edges are controlling the whole proportion and shape of this model. Here's another example of an existing Sony headphones preamp and it uses some KidOps inserts for adding connectors in the front and the back. We'll talk about that in a minute. Here's a close-up of the Sony preamp, and as you can see, it's well detailed at a high resolution. And if we zoom in, we'll see that we've got USB ports, micro USB parts, other kinds of switches, mini jack and optical jack. And on the front, we've got some more headphone jacks and some indicators and a knob and everything. It's all textured using the materials package, EV material system that we sell online. All I can do is I'm going to break this down into its component parts now. And here we have it broken down into basically a box with some loop cuts cut in because trying to manage the rendering artifacts as we cut in these switch guides right here. So the total for this is 54 faces for all of this. It's pretty efficient and looks pretty good. And now I'll toggle on the inserts and you can see in the inserts the squares represent the labeling that we have for the object. The rest are just the KidOps inserts and they are also built using the Nitrox 3D process so we can actually modify the resolution and the detail of those. So as I said this is a great example of using the Nitrox 3D modeling as applied to a real world object. So we'll end this video looking at this particular model. It's a hospital stand that they use to put either trays of food on or maybe a laptop or something like that. It has this little lever here which you can use to adjust it up and down. It's got casters as you can see. We can zoom in to see what the casters look like. Um, it's got a die cast stand and some extrusions here that create the up structure here and a very interesting stamped out metal surface for the top area. So let's take a quick look at this as we deconstruct it to understand what type of objects were used to create it. I'll jump in here, turn on the primitives. Here are the primitives that we are using to create this object. So there's the stand and there are the primitives. And what you can see is that we're using some basic things out of a plane here we're deforming it with this curve right here. We're adding holes in the plane. And as we add the holes, it creates the openings here and up in here. We're actually creating bevels using the Boolean bevel, which is this right here. So I'm gonna explain some of these in later videos, but you'll understand that uh, it's pretty simple to see that this little square 
right here is going to be rounded and extrude this circular diameter pipe down here. If we look closely at just one of the casters, you'll see that they are fairly simple. And it's just basically this box here with a cutout, which is what this is. So we have a box and a cutout there. It's a pretty straightforward object. And there is the wheel right there. It rotates around this empty right here. So while the final object may look impressive, once you start to deconstruct it, you find out it's a made of several simple primitives that we can create using modifiers in Blender. So the next video, I'm going to talk about how we can take one of these objects and we're going to deconstruct it in detail to understand it better.